بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسعدني ان انا اكون مع حضراتكم in the Banha online trauma course which you are going to talk about calcaneal fractures today I'll give you a brief review about the fractures of the calcaneal the mechanism of injury the methods of diagnosis and the management a brief introduction about the calcaneal fractures Uh, can feel history and calcaneal fractures used to be a, a very disabling injury بمعنى ان هي بتغير حياه الانسان يعني كان سنه 1916 كوتر اند هاندرسون they said that the man who breaks his heel bone is done his life has changed forever and he will never be normal again uh, up to 1942 the results of crash fractures of the osculses are rotten If you have a fracture or, or a crushed fracture of the heel bone or the calcaneus, then you will be in a great trouble and you will never regain your normal life. And another say was saying that injuries to the calcaneus can result in a severe disability. High energy calcaneus fracture is a life altering event for the vast majority of patients, which means that if you have a fracture of the calcaneus, especially a commuted one, your life will be changed forever. Let's talk briefly about the pathogenesis. How does the uh, calcaneal fractures happen? You just need to know that the, uh, it is mainly by axial loading force. And by the axial loading force, the main, it lacks a, a hammer with a force behind it. And the hammer here is the lateral process of the talus, which is a very strong piece of cortical bone. It gets into this gutter of the calcaneus between the anterior process and the posterior facet of the calcaneus. breaking the calcaneus mainly into primary two fractures and then several fractures according to the severity. So you know that the, this lateral process of the talus will be driven down into the calcaneus bone. And as it drives down into the calcaneus bone, will cause first a fra primary fracture line, which is going this way. This is the medial and this is the lateral way, medial and lateral way. And this is the primary fracture line going there with the sustentacular fragment anterior and medially and the tuberosity fragment in posterior and uh, lateral. Again, this is the primary fracture line. If you are looking from the coronal view, you will see this medial fragment containing the sustentaculum tori. It's also called the sustentacular fragment or the constant fragment. And the second fragment is the uh, tuberosity fragment, which is, includes the posterolateral part and it's called the calcaneal tuberosity. And you get two main fragments. This is the primary. fracture line, as you can see, the force is going from up, down, the talus is driving itself downwards, and it, as it drives its way, you can see a fragment, it's like a shell. So you have a, a cortical bone surrounding the, the calcaneus, and then the articular surface of the thing drops into inside the bone. But this is the primary fracture line. A second fracture line will go in this way, causing a lateral wall blow out, then you end up not with two fragments now because you have a second uh, fracture line, but you will have a thin lateral wall and a fragment which is inside here, which is being driven inside the body of the calcaneus. So it will be embedded inside the body, covered by the lateral wall. So if you look from the lateral side, you will find the lateral wall covering this depressed fragment. If you just reflect this lateral wall away or take it out, then you will see this depressed fragment inside. So we end up with these fragments. The first fragment is the medial or the strongest or the reference fragment or the constant fragment because it contains the dense cortical bone of the sustentacular telar. The second fragment is the tuberosity fragment, which lies posterior, and this is at with, with the attachment of the Achilles tendon to it. Next is the posterior facet fragment, and this is usually, you can see the configuration, it is embedded or depressed inside the body of the calcaneus or the cancellous bone of the calcaneus. And then the fourth fragment is the lateral wall blow out and it usually covers this uh, depressed or posterior fragment. And finally, the anterior process or the anterior fragment of the oscalsis. If you look or you want to analyze the, the, uh, the pathology of the calcaneal fracture, you can see in the, pre, in the recent, in the X-ray, this depressed articular fragment. Usually you can see this C-shaped articular surface, it usually should be matching to the posterior facet of the 
Taylor Souza, and the set of the Taylor Souza. This, this should be matching with this uh, posterior facet of the Taylor. So it has been pushed down and embedded inside the, uh, uh, the body of the calcaneus. So you need first to take this out and put it back to its place. You will forget about having over reduction because the posterior facet of the uh, Taylor Souza, the set of the Taylor will prevent over reduction. You just need to get this matching with the posterior process of the tails. So the, you have first this depression of the posterior facet. When you look for the coronal view or the uh, axial view, you will find two problems. You will have shortening of the length of the calcaneus of the height because it's an axial force driving the uh, calcaneus. It's like, like a boat, they call it tips. When you press from uh, an axial wall, you expect shortening from one in one direction and widening in another uh, direction. And the other thing you can see is that the sustentaculum tilai is here. The medial surface of the calcaneus is like a C shape or concave, and the lateral surface is convex. So if you are pressing from up down, expect the, because of the C shape configuration in here, you will have, find this debrose fragment tendency to go into a medial size. So you will have very small alignment of the heel. And this is very disabling because normally you have 10 to 15 degrees of valgus. So if you have a very small alignment of the knee or the heel, this will be also disabling. So regarding the pathogenesis, think about three, three things. Think about the depression of the posterior facet. Think about the shortening of the calcaneal height. Think about the widening of the heel. Widening of the heel means that you will have a pressure on the tendons which are running on the medial side or the lateral side, pressure on the nerves, and of course, bad uh, problem with the heel. And of course, don't uh, forget the soft tissue problem. And soft tissue problems is not only the heel problems, you will have also problem with the heel pad, with the heel pad atrophy and crushing of the heel pad, which might sometimes be uh, disabling. When we come to the types of the calcaneal fractures, we all know that there are two main classifications for calcaneal fractures. The first or the oldest one is the SX loprestic, loprestic classification, which is classifying uh, the calcaneal fracture into two major types. The first type is the extra articular or tongue type fracture, where you have a major fragment with the articular surface of the posterior facet attached to the uh, posterior part of the calcaneus, and this is all going into one depression, one big fragment like here. And it is going just, as you can see here, the mechanism of injury, the lateral process of the talus or the talar uh, process is just pushing down in there and you have a big fragment in there. If you have a manipulation of this fragment by a Steinman pin or whatever, and you lift it up, you will have an easy reduction, more or less an easy reduction. The second type is the depression or the joint depression type will you have a further comminution where this fragment or the articular fragment is separated from the posterior part of the tuberosity fragment. And this is where it becomes embedded and depressed into the substance of the calcaneus. And here you need to lift it up and fix it to the uh, stable fragment, which is a sustentacular fragment. So if you have the Essex for risk, you have the tongue type fracture and the joint depression type. The other classification is the Sanders classification, which is based on the CT scan, uh, mainly on the uh, coronal uh, view uh, cuts. And you can see from type one, which is a fracture, which is non-displaced, and this is essentially should be treated conservatively. Type two is a two articular fragments. You have the, this main fragment, the syntagular fragment, and the other type. With, when you have two articular fragments, it means that you have only one fracture line. Uh, going through the articular surface. It's considering the articular surface or the uh, posterior facet of the calcaneus. Type three, you will have three articular fragments, one, two, three. And if you have three articular fragments, you have two fracture lines, one in here and one in there. And type four is more than three articular fragments. And again, the uh, location of the fracture line, it varies. So you have type one, two, three, and four. And then according to the lines, you can have A, which is uh, with the fracture line just going more laterally, B in the middle and C fracture line just going through the sustentaculum to life. And as you go more to the medial side, the treatment or the prognosis becomes uh, 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 more uh, bad or worse. So you can have type two, A, B. If you have two, uh, type two is one, uh, one fracture line can be A or B or C. 
type three, you have two, uh, two uh, three articular fragments with two fracture lines can be uh, B, C, or A, B, according to the configuration of the fracture line. So we have finished with the pathogenesis and the classification of the calcaneal fractions. We come next to the clinical assessment. And when you come to the clinical assessment, always think about the soft tissue. Soft tissue is a major uh, a determining factor for the prognosis of uh, the uh, calcaneal fractures. So if you have a swelling, blisters, or compartment syndrome of the foot, then this, this definitely needs to be sorted out before thinking of any uh, further management. If you have an open wound, usually you have the open wound on the medial side of the, uh, of the calcaneus. And of course, it should be treated the same way as we are managing open fractures by soft tissue, de by uh, initial debridement, wash out, and you can have temporary stabilization either by wire or by external fixator, whatever type, but definitely it should have receive the uh, safe treatment uh, as uh, open uh, fractures. When we come to radiological assessment for the X-ray, of course, you have several views. Uh, the first of all is the lateral view. And the lateral view, you can, two important angles here to be measured is the, first is the angle of Gisan, which is the angle between the posterior uh, articular facet on the configuration of the facet and the anterior facet is usually 130 to 145. And uh, the second angle is the Bohler's angle, which is uh, angle between line going along the tangential part of the posterior part of the calcaneus of the, uh, of the posterior tuberosity of the calcaneus, and the other line going uh, uh, just crossing between the anterior, the highest part of the anterior process of the calcaneus and the highest part of the posterior facet. And this is the angle here, usually between 20 and 40. If you have uh, axial force, uh, which is driving this into these areas, you will have change of these lines according to this. So this is the normal side. Mm -hmm. If you have a fracture of the calcaneus, you will have this uh, posterior articular facet being depressed down there. So this line will go into this direction and you will have definitely a change and this will be decreased, uh, this uh, angle of uh, descent. For the uh, Bohler's angle, of course, this is a normal angle, which is, uh, as we mentioned, it is 20 to 40. Sometimes it becomes zero and sometimes it becomes even reverse because this whole fragment will go down and you will have reverse uh, Bohler's angle. The second view is the Harris uh, axial view and has axial view, you can see this way by getting the beam this way at a 45 degrees to the ground and it will give you an uh, an idea about the subtalar joint. It will give you an idea about the direction of the fracture line, and it will give you an idea about the amount of comminution on the medial side and the amount of heel varus, and can tell you about the shortening. So you can measure the shortening in here. You can see the fracture line. It is very beneficial, this X-ray. Of course, when we have a CT, we'll have more detail, but at least uh, for the X-ray or the Harris axial view will give you a, a rough idea about this configuration. And the third one is the Broden's view, which gives you another view of the subtalar joint or the anterior facet of the joint. And you can see it here by giving this in a direction on the other uh, way around. Of course, the CT scan now becomes a standard. You cannot proceed with the management of a calcaneal fracture uh, unless you have a proper CT scan. And of course, CT scan, you can have a semi-coronal view, axial view, and sagittal view. Definitely, this will give you a very good idea about the size of the sustentacular fragment, the size of the depressed fragment and how much it is depressed, the lateral wall fragment. And if you can look here, you can see also the amount of depression or distortion of the fracture site. You can see, you can show you the medial wall comminution, the lateral wall blow out and gives you a very good idea about your plan for uh, the management. Uh, now, we, after finishing up with the pathogenesis and the classification and the radiological uh, management. Of course, MRI does not have a major role here in the calcaneal fracture. Just CT and plain X-rays uh, should be uh, enough. Uh, treatment options varies from non-operative treatment, either casting or early range of motion by just putting in a crepe bandage. This is mainly for undisplaced articular fractures or minimally displaced uh, body fracture or in a very high risk patients where the general condition does not allow you to proceed with the operative management. For the surgical management, you can have different approaches like the extensile approach, which is used to be the standard approach, the mini open approach like the sinus tarsi approach, percutaneous approach, uh, or 
in severe cases you end up with a primary arthrodesis for calcaneal fractures this is mainly for displaced uh, fracture and for primary arthrodesis mainly for severely comminuted fractures when you compare conservative versus open uh, surgical uh, reduction reduction fixation has always been considered to be giving uh, uh, better results than non-operative treatment as you can see in so many papers but it comes back to the 90s and 80s but a long-term study uh, has been uh, saying that uh, conservative uh, versus surgical treatment there was no definite strong evidence of, uh, between the surgical and non-surgical treatment as regard to quality of life at three years uh, outcome uh, this is known, uh, and I think Dr. Buckley has uh, said a very good paper about this. However, more recently, the uh, more concern has been considered regarding the calcaneal malunion. Malunion, which means that you will have a various deformity of the, feet, of the heel, shortening of the heel. And this is really very disabling. And again, the consideration of surgical treatment in uh, displaced calcaneal fracture has gained again the upper hand regarding the management of calcaneal fractures. So if you can allow the patient to retain the calcaneal height, the calcaneal width, and the angle, and it will definitely uh, give the patient a very good outcome rather than the conservative uh, treatment. For the surgical timing, usually you try to get it before within three weeks because after this consolidation will happen because you know the calcaneus is mostly is made of cancellous bone. So getting these many fragments back to its place would become a difficult task uh, after three weeks. It can be approached, but you will not get a very optimum result. But definitely you need to wait until the soft tissue becomes stable and you can get this uh, known uh, wrinkle sign, which gives you idea that the swelling has gone down and the condition is getting much better. Beware in these kinds of patients, diabetic patients, patients who smoke, patients with neuropathy, patients with vascular insufficiency, patients with open fractures, fractures with blisters like this, because especially if these blisters are going through the intended line of um, uh, incision, persistent swelling or local skin disease, these are very bad prognostic facts. I usually tell my patients, if you need your wound to heal well, stop smoking immediately, get your diabetes controlled, Neuropathy, you can't do much about it, but you need to be expecting that you might have problems or bad prognosis when you have these problems. Now we, we need to know where to put the screws or where should we be placing our screws. We, to put your screws, you need a dense area of cortical bone and the cortical bone mostly is around this area of the sustentaculum to lie, the subcortical area where this is under the uh, articular facet or the posterior facet and the area of the tuberosity in here. So you can put this area with the sustentaculum and this is the target where my screws should go through. This lateral wall with the screws going down there and this area, you can see it from this uh, slide as well. These are the dense areas, five major areas for the calcaneus provide structural rigidity of the bone uh, and therefore for screw fixation. I can divide it into three main fragments. If you are putting through three groups of screws, first group of screws should be in the anterior part or the anterior process of the calcaneus. This is the first group. The second group should be just under the articular surface or the, uh, this area of the medial side or the lateral side and should be directed towards the sustentaculum tili. And this should be, this is dense cortical bone. And this is the area where the screw will support the articular surface. So if you want to have screws to support the articular surface, get transverse screws through this area going down and you go just from here a bit anteriorly because the sustentaculum, and when you compare it to the posterior facet, the sustentaculum in this area. So you direct your screws just um, uh, medially and a bit anteriorly to catch into the sustentaculum to lie. And the third group is here in the anterior facet. So you have one group of screws in here in this area and the anterior part. One group of the screws just underneath the articular surface and the third group of screws which will be holding the tuberosity fragment if you want to uh, retain the configuration of your uh, calcaneus. And you can see here, going from this way, lateral to media, and from posterior to anterior, you should be catching this area with your uh, screws. This is one thing we talked about the screws, but we need to look about the, uh, the blood supply of the area because the skin here if you don't respect the blood supply, you will have problems with the, with the skin healing. 
Generally, the, the arterial supply of the uh, lateral side of the uh, heel comes from the lateral calcaneal artery, which comes is the most posterior part of the uh, uh, most uh, posterior group of arteries. The second group is the lateral malleolar artery, and the third group is the lateral tarsal artery. You can see this way. So if you it is you are safe enough if you go behind the lateral calcaneal artery. And uh, this is you can see it here. So if you go this way, as you can see from this line, then you are more or less safe. However, the traditional uh, extensile lateral approach used to go this way. So it because it used to be midway between the lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. So there is some risk of uh, uh, hitting this uh, lateral calcaneal artery. If you go a bit more posterior, just a bit, you are more likely le or less likely to injure this lateral calcaneal artery. And there is a nice paper uh, describing this, the proximity of the lateral calcaneal artery with the modified extensile lateral approach compared to the standard lateral approach. So this is a modified uh, extensile lateral approach. It goes just about uh, 75 uh, millimeters just uh, lateral to the Achilles tendon compared to the extensile lateral approach which goes midway between the lateral fold of the Achilles tendon and the uh, lateral malleolus. If you uh, just go a bit posterior and go this way, you are less likely to injure this lateral calcaneal artery and you can see it from this uh, drawing where you know, the lateral calcaneal artery is just crossing this way. So you can play just a bit uh, safer by this way. I'd like to, you can have your curve either, this is the longitudinal part and this is the uh, transverse part. You can get it like a gentle curve or just an um, angle, right angle. Sharp dissection down to the bone, as you can see here, and you reflect the flap in one mass. This will help you to gain it again because you will have a good soft tissue cover. Once you lift it up like this, with by sharp dissection and then by periosteal elevator, you will have the peroneal tendons and the sure nerve included in this uh, flap, so you are safe enough that you have not injured these uh, uh, important structures. And then you put temporary K wires, one just uh, at the lateral malleolus, just and another one just as into the talus to be reflected superiorly. These three groups of K wires will give you a very good exposure of the lateral wall of the calcaneus. And you can see this is the lateral wall. Sometimes you get confused because you find don't find a definitive fracture line. But don't worry because this is the lateral blowout fragment or the lateral roll fragment. Once you lift it up, you will find the white glistening articular cartilage embedded and curved inside the cancellous bone of the calcaneus. So you just lift it like a window or put it aside, lift this up, and then you will find the uh, fragment in, uh, in size. Definitely, I, would, I advise you to use this uh, shine the screw in order to manipulate the tuberosity fragment. This will help you to adjust the various valgus mal aligned to the heel and will give you a very good way of traction in order to put the things together. So this is very important because as a way of traction and always remember that you need to adjust. There is a tendency for various uh, uh, mal alignment of the heel. You need to get it back to its place. And as we have mentioned, you put, you lift the uh, posterior facet up it is just embedded, you just lifted by osteotome or periosteal elevator. Put this couple of screws from lateral to medial, aiming at the tentaculum to lie. So you are going from this way a bit anteriorly under C arm control, aiming at the tentaculum to lie. This will prevent rotation of this fragment and will support it because they are in the subcortical bone. Whatever screws you are used, you just remember the three zones. Either you can use like a small one third tubular any kind of uh, plates or this uh, special plates. But always remember you need three groups of screws. The first group is supporting the articular surface under the articular uh, structure here. The second group in the tuberosity fragment and the third group screws into the uh, uh, anterior process of the calcaneus. Different types of plates and screws, locked or unlocked, low profile or high profile, whatever. But always, whatever the number of screws you need to have, couple of screws in this area, couple of screws in the anterior process and couple of screws into the uh, posterior tuberosity fragment. So always, whenever you are assessing a reduction, look for these three groups of screws. First group posterior, first, second group supporting the articular surface and the third group as the anterior process of the calcaneus. Uh, sometimes you find this extensile approach, remember the difference with the minimally invasive surgery. 
So why not to go for a minimally invasive uh, uh, technique for a reduction of the calcaneal fractures uh, by just doing indirect reduction and fixation like the anyway or the minimally invasive technique. And here comes the, uh, the sinus support because this is what you really need to see is the articular surface or the articular reduction. And to see this, you don't need to do this big extensile approach unless you do need to do much uh, reduction of this section. And here comes the sinus tarsi approach. But whenever you are doing this, always remember, you need to have to couple one or two screws from lateral to medial for articular surface fixation, one or two screws going from behind anteriorly, anteriorly and laterally in order to keep the length of the calcaneus and one or two screws to, to keep the height and these screws going from posterior in, in, in inferior lateral to superior medial targeting into the sustentaculum teli. This will help maintain the height and will also uh, help to support the, to prevent the various malalignment. So when you put these screws, get the heel into valgus before putting this couple of screws. When you are positioning your patient for this, the patient can lie prone, you can put him in a lateral position. I prefer to put the patient in a lateral, in a prone position, so that you, when you turn the C arm in this way, you can have this Harris axial view. And just by turning the foot laterally, you can see have just the nice uh, lateral view. So the patient is lying prone and with the foot hanging out of the head. Of the table. It's always uh, helpful in bilateral cases because sometimes if, I, if you have a case of bilateral fracture calcaneus, instead of doing it with one patient lying on one side and then after you finish, you turn the patient on the other side by doing it this way, you can have both sides being done. For the sinus tarsi approach, it's about four centimeter approach just inferior to the lateral malleus. Be aware of the peroneal tendons which are crossing just around here. We need to identify them and to protect them. The sure nerve also needs to be identified and protected. Go by blunt by the section into the, to see the articular surface or the articular facet. Once you open it up, you will find the depressed fragment in here, and you will have a guide for the posterior facet of the uh, talus. So you need this. This is the lateral wall blowout, and this is the depressed fragment. You just need to lift this up, put a couple of KYs to support it, and then lift it up and fix it with your uh, screws. So you can see it this way and we lift it up and then you cover it with the blowout. You can use like an osteotome or whatever uh, instrument just to manipulate in order to de disimpact this depressed articular fragment and to lift it up and hold it with screws before fixing it with table. As you can see here, the guide for good reduction that you will see get the articular surface instead of the being depressed this way, you can see this, this way, it came back into this way, matching with the facet of the calcaneus. And in the axial view, you reduce the various malalignment. And always, whenever you get a, a chance, uh, put a temporary K wire. And then you can use like cannulated screws, 4.5 cannulated screws. And then you can get your screws down, put one screw and a couple of screws going from here to there. After lifting it up, this will support the articular surface and give you a very good reduction of the articular surface. Next, you need to have this second group screws, one of them going from posterior to anterior, and the second group is going from inferior to superior and medially. This one is to maintain the uh, length of the calcaneus, and the other one is to maintain the height and the various valgus mal alignment. Again, you can use uh, uh, 4.5 or 6.5 can you use screws. You can see it this way. So this is one group screw going from along the longitudinal axis of the calcaneus, but you just do this after you finish lifting up the depressed articular fragment. And then you put your screws to maintain the uh, length of the calcaneus this way from posterior to anterior. And the second group of screws, which is going from inferior lateral to superior media this way to meet this screw, the tip of this screw as a sustentaculum tilar. And these screws are meant to maintain the uh, various uh, or the valgus uh, alignment of the heel and to correct the, to prevent the, the heel varus and also are meant to maintain the height of the uh, calcaneus. So the final configuration, you end up with a couple of screws going transversely from lateral to medial, uh, screws going along the longitudinal axis of the calcaneus from superior medial to anterior lateral, because you know the axis of the calcaneus is going from posterior to anterior lateral to meet the cuboid, where the talus is crossing the other way from posterior to anterior medial to meet the, the uh, navicular. So you go this way from posterior medial to anterior lateral, and this way from posterior lateral to superior and medial. 
So this will end up with a nice configuration. You end up with this very good uh, configuration of screws with the reduction of the articular surface, and you can get up uh, this uh, way in a good way. For a T-brost fragment, this is another uh, fragment, which this is very urgent to be reduction because this fragment, sometimes it's causing pressure on the skin. And I can see it's very frequently in diabetics with lack of sensation. So if you don't fix this very rapidly, this will have like a pressure necrosis of the skin, of the heel skin. And if you have this pressure necrosis, then the whole prognosis will be uh, affected of the patient. So soft tissue problems need, will be happen again. And to get it, this, you just need to, I, for this, I prefer to have uh, in two incisions, one on the medial side and one on the lateral side of the Achilles tendon. One to put my reduction towel or reduction clamp, and the second way or the second uh, incision is used to just put my screws, interfragmentary screws. If you get it uh, fast, you will get it very easily, and you could you, you put your screws uh, this way. Of course, we have so many complications of calcinia fractures like infection or soft tissue problems, especially in diabetics and patients with neuropathy. Uh, arthritis, subtalar arthritis, very frequent, and you can, sometimes you cannot do anything about it because the articular surface is comminuted or fragmented, so you cannot get this nice smooth surface again. And if you end up with subtalar arthritis, you can do a subtalar arthrodes, but However, by getting a good reduction, you will prevent the heel varus and the peroneal tendon impingement and other problems. So try to get your reduction as much as you can to avoid, avoid this problem. If you have arthritis, doing subtalar fusion in uh, uh, aligned heel gives a better prognosis than doing subtalar arthrodes in a deformed or shortened or varus heel. Sural neurosis can happen because of the impingement of the sural nerve as it runs on the lateral side. Tendinosis or tendinitis, or uh, especially the peroneal tendons, can happen. Hind wood varus, this is very disabling. If you try to put your heel in varus and walk on it, you will find how disabling is it. Uh, so try to avoid this when you are treating calcinia fraction. Of course, uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy can happen after this kind of injury, and you get pro uh, proper uh, management. Finally, the take home message of calcinia fractures now are treated more surgically. Uh, but the techniques of uh, reduction and fixation has improved a lot with better prognosis. However, whatever the treatment, the severity will determine the outcome. If you have a very comminuted fracture, don't expect the best results. But if you have less comminuted fracture, you can expect good results if you do a good uh, method of treatment. Timing of the surgery definitely depends on the soft tissue because if you have a bad soft tissue, you cannot uh, attack or do surgery uh, so you need to wait until the soft tissue becomes uh, good. Articular reconstruction and reduction of the calcaneal body gives the best result. Always put your aim to reduce the articular surface and reduce the configuration of the calcaneus. And while doing this, always be meticulous with the soft tissue handling to prevent uh, complications. And I wish you all the best of luck while treating these kind of injuries. And I wish to thank you for your uh, attention and I repeat my thanks to Professor Muhammad Al Ashab and Dr. Mahmoud Abu Zaid for uh, having me with them for this uh, nice uh, course. Thank you very thank, much. Sir. Thank you so much, our great professor, Professor Ahmed Khlaif, for this very, very interesting talk. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. I think any had the chef will talk that have a very easy for him to do uh, fixation of calcaneal fractures, if and. يا فندم ربنا يخليك ان شاء الله يعني دي حاجه اي هوب ان هي بس وانس زي انديرستاند ات اند جيت ات ذا رايت واي اي ثينك ذي ويل جيت ات ان شاء الله ويعالجوها بمنتهى السهوله باذن الله ان شاء الله ربنا يكرم سعادتك يا فندم دكتور محمود ابو زيد يو ار ذا مودريتور وذ اور جريت بروفيسور اني كويستشنز فور اور جريت بروفيسور دكتور محمود يو ار ميوتد أستاذن حضرتك يا دكتور أحمد في أسئلة معنا بس أول أه. سؤال لحضرتك هو في حد بيسأل حاجة which classification has a better prognostic value Sanders or Essex prognostic classification and personally which one you prefer لا أنا الحقيقة I prefer طبعا Sanders classification لأنه بيدي لي more great uh, يعني more descriptive uh, picture عن ال classification والصورة بتاعت الكسر ال ال Essex prognostic is a bit primitive في الحالات الاولانيه بس انت if you are planning for surgical treatment you need to have a more detailed عشان كده بتحتاج السي تي سكان and i cannot treat a calcaneus without having a ct scan 
And when you have a CT scan, then the standard classification is based on the CT scan. SX Lopresti is based on the uh, plain X-ray. And once I do, I cannot treat a calcaneus before without having a CT scan. And if you are having a CT scan, you are talking about standard classification. Tamim. Sorry, Tanya, had the al Hadretak. I see that you use different approaches depending on location of fracture. Does this mean that there is no standard approach for calcaneal fractures? Both, uh, the standard approach is the extensile uh, lateral approach. This is what we uh, we have been all trained with. And if you if you are starting to deal with calcaneal fractures, you need to start with this uh, extensile lateral approach because it gives you an uh, understanding of the anatomy, anatomy and configuration of the calcaneus. Uh, the minimally invasive or the SX or the sinus tarsi approach are you are also useful in less comminuted fractures or the fractures which are mainly involving the uh, depressed articular fragment. But you need to be always ready to do this extensile uh, lateral approach at any time. So you need to be acquainted first with the extensile lateral approach before getting into any other uh, method. And then at any time, you, need, you might need to get back to this extensile lateral approach for your uh, management. Amen. في حد تالت بيسأل حضرتك what is your opinion about using Steinman Ben and elevating the depressed fragment then applying cast. This is a very old uh, training وده بيبقى في الجوينت في التانك تايب اللي هو احنا يعني في الحالات اللي دلوقتي الهاي فيلوستي انجريز يعني التانك تايب ده مش بتشوفه كتير انما once you, you lift it up مع كده ما تحط كابل اوف وايرز ولا كي وايرز حتى تبقى لو انت ما عندكش كده امسكها بكي وايرز انا بحب استعمل كي وايرز كتيره جدا في الاوبن فراكشرز والحاجات دي يعني وانس يو بوت ات دي بوت سم سم وايرز تو ليفت تو تو هولد ات اب يعني على الاقل عشان تقدر تشوف الجلد وتشوف السوفت تيشو بيكوز اف يو ار بوتنج ات وان بوتنج ا كاست ذن يو ار ماسكينج ذا سوفت تيشو اند يو دونت سي اني ثينج سو يو نيد اولويز تو كيب فولوينج ذيس اب تو تو جادج ذا سوفت تيشوز يعني I think this was a very old the I am also the physical asking you know تمام حد بيسال حضرتك we need bone graft sometime بص يعني in the first we used to use bone graft now I don't usually prefer to use bone graft some people use synthetic bone graft I don't want to add to the morbidity of the patient this is a cancellous bone and once you lift it up and you put your screws and you get a very good reduction, it will fill up eventually. So I am less tending now to use bone grafts in the management of calcinia fractures. I don't know Dr. Rami or Dr. Mohammed or Ayoum, eh? But I mean, it's different. But I have less tendency to use bone grafts in management of calcinia. Other than the subtle arthritis, you can use bone grafts more. May I have a question, please, sir? اتفضل يا فندم احنا ساعتها كنا عاملين بيبر زمان على البرايمري ارثروديسيس في الجريد 4 كالكينيال فراكشرز هل ده حاليا ساعتك بتعمله يا استاذنا ولا ولا يو دونت بريفير برايمري سبتيلا ارثروديسيس يا فندم بص هقول لحضرتك حاجه يعني انا البرايمري سبتيلا ارثروديسيس انا اعمله ايميديتلي كده اهوت ما بعملوش كتير اولا في الحالات سيفيرلي كوميوتد اما بتخش تعمل برايمري سبتيلا ارثروديسيس ما انت بتعملها في البرايمري في السيفيرلي كوميوتد فراكشر بتلاقي حتى لما بخش عشان مانيبوليت الفراجمنتس بيبقى صعب لان يعني عامله زي فتفته خالص ما فيش حاجه فراجمنتس ان انا امسكها. اي بريفير ان انا اديلي سبرايمر لو انا بلاننج ان انا اعمل برايمر سبتر اصل بستنى فور تو 6 ويكس لغايه لما في بس شويه كونسوليديشن وبعد كده اعمل الـ 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 عشان اقدر مانيبوليت الفراجمنتس بتاعتي. بس انا مور تندنس ناو ان انا احاول ارستور ذا اناتومي اوف ذا كالكينيس اوف ذا اوت لاين اوف ذا كالكينيس And then, if you if I find that the, it's totally destroyed, I do like the primary arthritis. But I, when I'm doing this, I prefer always to restore the outline regarding the very small alignment with heel height. I give this my priority for the management. فأنا دلوقتي primary subtera هي بتفuse مع بعضها. أنا I try to restore the height and the length and the very small alignment, and I I. Prefer to let the uh, primary septal arthritis into a later uh, stage if I can. If it is completely disappointing, I will try to store an outline and put the two screws from the terrace to the calcaneus immediately. Another question, please, sir. 
البوست اوبريتيف سوري في سام تايمز في البوست اوبريتيف وايفن في الكونسرتيف بيبقى عندنا البرودنج اوف ذا هيل الهيل وايدنج يا فندم وده ناس كتير قوي ساعتك بتتصرف معاه ازاي يا فندم والله في المانجمنت اوف كالكينيا الفراكشر برودنج اوف ذا هيل ده بيبقى مشكله وبيعمل مشاكل مع ناس كتير قوي فلما بخش بعمل زي برضه ساينس تاساي او ميني او ميني ميني اكستنسايل ابروتش وبشيل I, I take out this part of the lateral wall, I thin the calcaneus out. But provided none of my conch and heal uh, virus or like I mean, I to restore the, uh, the heal uh, configuration, no, my ash virus, I take part of the lateral wall and sometimes I use it as a graft and fill it up with the in the subtalar joint, but I'm like a graft with subtalar uh, arthrodes. If I do this, I go in, the, in here, take part of this and use it as a graft. To fill up and do subtalar arthrodes in the same way. If I raffed the heel, of the same way, I took the bone down, but I didn't touch it. I put subtalar joint to make it diffuse. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud. Do you have questions? Ah, but if there is a person who asks something, when you use the conservative treatment, you use the cast on the knee. Boss, I use the conservative treatment. I don't use it. I mean, if I use it, I don't like the cast. Essentially, I mean, I put the slab in the swelling and all that stuff. فانا بحطه مثلا لو هستنى بحط له بحطه في بوستيس لاب 2 تو 3 ويكس وبعدين بحطه في رباط ضاغط نون ويت بيرنج السلاب او الكاست ان انا اعده في الفتره دي كتيره قوي هيبقى لو في الفيري ان كومبلاينت بيشنت انما انا بحاول ان انا اخليه يدوس اكتر وعمر ما بخليه يدوس قبل ست اسابيع يعني هو بيقول لي عشان قد ايه هو نون ويت بيرنج فروم 6 تو 8 ويكس نيفر بيفور ذيس تمام يا فندم هي كل كل الناس اللي معلقين بقى معلقين شكرا لحضرتك يعني يا فندم انا اللي بشكرهم على ان هم تابعونا كلنا بنشكر حضرتك يا دكتور احمد باشا على المحاضره الاكثر من رائعه دي يا فندم انا اللي متشكر لحضرتك يا فندم على الفرصه الجميله ويشرف الشرف العظيم لنا يا دكتور احمد باشا الله يخلي حضرتك يا فندم ربنا يكرم عليك ثانك يو سو ماتش بروفيسور احمد خلايف كايرو يونيفرستي اند ذا مايسترو اوف فوت اند انكل ان ايجيبت فور الاوينج اس to uh, uh, hear such a, a lovely uh, presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you so much.